Hello everyone from around the world. I've just been watching your thread and you are watching from everywhere. Damascus, Syria, Dubai, Indonesia, India, Philippines, UK, New York State, just across the border, and of course here in Canada. Of Naturally, I have to say hello to family and friends, mom, dad, Michino, Bonnie, Suzanne, Kathy, I see you're watching. Bon uh, T, I know, is going to make it later. And you who have been joining me week after week, Sagi, Cherry, I see your names popping up and it's nice to see you. And if you're new to OEM 101, well, welcome. This time is spent really getting intense, not too serious, but intense and informational about some fundamental baking. And the idea is to empower you as a baker. So when you get in the kitchen with these recipes, you know exactly what to do. I wanted today to be about muffins because it's been a request over this entire OEM 101 series to do a muffin recipe and you picked blueberry, which is a great choice because we have lots of discussion points and I have recorded um, from social media and from the community page a lot of your questions and I think you'll find naturally that they are going to come up as I move through this recipe. The first thing I like about this recipe is we've got a fresh sort of light fluffy blueberry muffin and I'm going to talk about the difference between the fresh and frozen blueberries but this muffin also has a streusel topping so it adds a nice crunch to the top of the muffin which is really nice and that's where I'd like to start things off. Now this is a recipe um, and you'll find that when this video is reposted um, it will come up with the full recipe link so you'll have all these measurements um, to access but making a streusel is one of those things. If you're doing a lot of regular baking, you can make a, a big batch of this. You can double this recipe, triple, quadruple it, and then you just keep it in a jar in the fridge and it will keep. There's nothing to really be compromised about it. And then just pull it out and use it whenever you feel like it. A streusel topping can be delicious on top of a banana bread, a chocolate chip cake, a zucchini cake, or any other style of muffin you wish, so long as the batter itself has some structure. So I already have my 50 grams of all-purpose flour in my mixing bowl. And for my streusel, I like to use brown sugar. It just lends a nice little color contrast to the muffin. Um, you could use white sugar if you want. What I would steer clear from is a liquid sugar like honey or maple syrup. You want a granulated style here. And I'll touch more on the sugars when I get into the muffin batter. I do like my streusel topping to have a hint of spice to it. So I'm just adding a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, just a barely there hint of spice. I don't want it to overwhelm the lightness of the blueberry muffin. And uh, I think it was, uh, who was asking about the streusel that Brad was asking about, a streusel that's not crunchy. So I find it's adding the sugar, but also adding a quarter teaspoon of baking powder really helps aerate the streusel as it bakes in the oven and it keeps it separated from the batter and that's what really helps make it crunchy. I used to make streusel batters without or streusel toppings without using baking powder and I found once I started adding just that little bit, that quarter teaspoon, it really made a big difference in terms of that crunchiness and that distinction on top of the muffin. It doesn't just melt into the batter. Now I've got 45 grams or three tablespoons of butter. Now this butter is cool and I'm just going to cut it into pieces. It's not ice cold from the fridge, but it's only been sitting out for about 10 minutes. If you use melted butter or too soft of a butter in your streusel, I find that's too where you can end up with a slightly soggy streusel once it comes out of the oven because it's already melted and so it kind of melts into the batter a little bit. So try and keep your butter cool if you can for the topping and you just get in there with your fingers. You can use a pastry cutter if you wish, the kind you would use to make pie dough or two knives, but I don't mind getting in there with my fingers. If I'm doing a bigger batch, if I am quadrupling this recipe, then I would definitely use, you could use a mini chopper or food processor if you wanted to. But you don't want to over blend it. You want to get rid of the big lumps of butter. And oh, remember way back when, when I did the first bake along, um, OEM 101, and we made scones together. 
And so I use this technique too when doing streusel. I just get in there with my fingers and blend it. If you didn't know about OEM 101 way back then, then you'll have to look it up because it's a good bake-along recipe. I pace it so you can make uh, these along with me. And if you saw on my social feeds, I did post these ingredients. So if you're baking these with me, hopefully you're at this part in the process, just working the butter into the flour and the sugar. And I just start rubbing it with my fingertips, but I don't get that in there with my full hands. There we go. A few larger pieces are okay, but you're not looking for this to come together. It's not going to come together like a cookie dough or a scone dough or, or any type of batter. It will remain crumbly. There we go. That's a nice, even, consistent texture. I can't feel big pieces of butter. And any slightly larger bits, like a combination of that flour, sugar, butter, will add that sort of nugget of crunch, sweet crunch on top of your muffin, which is really nice. A muffin is a simple thing, but it's all in the details that really count to make it something special. I think that's why you were asking repeatedly for muffins over the last few weeks. Okay, now let's start with the batter. And what's great about muffins they're meant to be an easy snack, morning pastry, treat, um, and you wanna be able to mix them by hand. So I have my half a cup or 115 grams of unsalted butter that has softened to room temperature. And the reason I like to mix muffins by hand is you don't want to over mix them um, because you actually could end up with a tough muffin. A muffin, batter by nature can be a little bit um, of a thicker batter than a cake batter because it has to have structure to hold the fruit in it and also rise up within the cup. If it's too fluid, like quite often cake batters, you pour into the pan, you're going to end up with a flat muffin and then potentially a soggy muffin too. Um, which is why to answer your question, Cherry, I saw you ask, could you flip this method, this recipe, and treat it like a sponge cake? whipping your eggs and sugar. I think you might be frustrated, Cherry, um, with the end result because the egg volume is not great enough and you would potentially have a, a, a muffin batter that would spill over the edge of the pan, stick to the edges, and also what's very important is you want it to peel away from the paper um, easily. In a sponge cake, it doesn't do that quite as well. So I hope that answers your first question. I saw that you asked a, a couple there. So I'm just softening up my butter. And now this muffin batter, even though the flavor is officially a blueberry muffin, this is a perfect neutral, light, fluffy muffin base. So it suits all sorts of fruit additions. Um, I don't flavor it too extremely one way or the other. So it really can, through your whole fruit season or year round, tailor this to your tastes. So I keep it on that light, um, color, I keep it light in color by adding granulated sugar, excuse me, 200 grams or one cup. If you wanted a, a sort of darker muffin, you could use, um, or a healthier sugar option, you could use coconut palm sugar and you would use it in the same measurement. Um, coconut palm sugar measures half on the glycemic index. And if you're from Southeast Asia, Oh, well, wouldn't Gula Malaka do the trick? Because that is uh, a similar type of sugar. The granular um, textures can be a little different, but it would work wonderfully. Again, like the streusel, I wouldn't recommend immediately switching to um, a liquid sugar like a maple. Um, you would have to then balance, change, start changing your liquid measurements that's in this recipe. But I'm trying to give you the confidence to play and experiment and customize these recipes. So if you wanted to say use honey or maple syrup in place of some of the granulated sugar, then reduce your milk sour cream liquid um, to, to balance out that moisture content. And you probably could do okay there. All right, so at this point, combining the butter and sugar by hand, you can't overdo it at this point. So don't worry about over mixing your batter. You want it nice and smooth, and this is how you give your muffin structure. And while we've got the friction of the sugar working against the butter, let's draw out some flavor. A little bit of lemon zest is nice. And again, this is one of those spots where you can customize the flavor. If you want to put orange, lime, leave it out altogether. 
The one flavor I don't add when I'm making muffins compared to, you know, <laughs> how much vanilla I use in all my baking is vanilla because I don't want the muffin to taste like a cupcake and I don't want the flavor of the blueberries to be overwhelmed um, by the vanilla. So I let a little lemon zest just keep it light on the palate when you take that bite and it works really well. And this is when I like to add the lemon zest because this step of creaming, of combining the butter and sugar together until it's nice and smooth, really draws out the, the flavor nicely and evenly. All right, now it's time to add the eggs. How's everyone doing? Is anyone baking along with me? Have you got all your ingredients ready? I know we had lots of questions about the fruit, the fresh versus frozen, so we will get to that. I'm gonna take a peek now. Oh, actually, Carol Wilton, great question. What's the difference between a streusel and a crumble? Well, a streusel is more of, it, it, it's a bit semantic, but it's really just more of that light, crispy topping, that crumble that you put on top, where a crumble can be a little more earthy. You might work oats into it and a little more substantial. And you can actually put that on top of fruit and bake it like a crisp in a larger amount, where I find a streusel would be just too crunchy to bake on top of fruit fruit on its own. So I hope that that's a good, an interesting question and a very good one. I've got my two eggs at room temperature. So I'll add them one at a time. And this too, you mix it until it's fully blended before you add the next egg. And there is no fear of over whip uh, mixing at this point. It's only when you start adding the flour that you need to be a little more gentle and not over stir it. So I've got that first egg about in there. Now here is a great tip. Have you ever tried making a muffin batter, a cake batter, anything that starts with this method of creaming the butter and sugar together, you start adding the eggs and then you notice that that base batter starts separating a little bit. Like it almost looks like it's curdling and yet it makes no sense that it would. Well, when you're adding different ingredients, the egg has a very different makeup than the butter and the sugar. And sometimes that butter wants to separate and hang out by itself in the bowl. So I find the great way to fix that so that you end up, the reason you don't want to keep going and let that batter separate is that even though the batter will come together in the end, you might find you get a more crumbly muffin and you don't want that. You want it to be nice and moist and hold together. So my fix for that is to measure out the flour for the recipe and I'll just take a couple tablespoons before I keep adding eggs and that just that little bit of flour added in between the eggs will smooth out the batter and you'll find that the butter and the sugar and everything comes together smoothly. And you'll be happier with the end results. But we haven't had that happen here. I almost wish that would have happened and then I could have shown you how the, really the difference it makes when you add the flour. But we've got a nice smooth batter base here, ensuring that your ingredients are, are of a like temperature. So your butter is at room temperature, so your eggs should be at room temper temperature is also a very important tip for getting those ingredients to combine evenly. Now I'm gonna get the dry ingredients ready. I've measured two and a half cups of all-purpose flour into my sifter already, and I'm going to sift that. But let's talk about flour for a minute because there was a question that came in uh, from Delani about flour types and different flours have different names in different countries. And I touched on this a little bit last week here in Canada and I believe in the United States. Our three basic types are bread flour for making bread, cake and pastry for making cake and pastry, and all purpose is what we call our generic flour. Self-raising flour is um, more available, readily available in the UK and even in Europe to some extent. Um, it already has your baking powder and a little bit of salt worked into it. And in playing with recipes that call for self-raising flour and trying to come up with my own uh, because Delani was asking how to create your own self-raising flour. I add a quarter teaspoon of baking powder to every 50 grams of plain flour to create my own um, self-raising flour and I find generally then I get a good result. 
Also, when you're making muffins, quite often people want to make them, they consider it, well, if I'm going to have it for breakfast, I'd like to make it healthier. Uh, can I use whole wheat flour? You can use whole wheat flour in this recipe up to 50% without compromising the taste and the way the muffin bakes. Um, of course, you'll see the bran woven throughout your muffin. It'll change the color a little bit, but it's um, you don't want to replace with whole wheat flour 100% because those little pieces of bran actually interrupt the protein development when your muffin bakes. So if you find sometimes when you bake with whole wheat flour, things may seem a little heavier. It's because your flour isn't getting that full lift. Adding a little extra moisture can help that along. Um, but you can, yes, substitute up to 50%. If I'm designing a recipe for a wholesome, healthy muffin, trying to reduce the fat and the sugar and use whole grain flours, I really play with the recipe and how all those ingredients come together so that you can do it with a successful result. So that gives you some permission, just not full permission. Um, to the flour, I need to add my baking powder, two teaspoons. There we go. Just a quarter <coughs> teaspoon of salt. That's just to balance out the flavor. And then I like to add just a touch of nutmeg. I don't really want to taste the nutmeg, nor do I really want to see it in the muffin. But if you've ever had a delicious um, sour cream or baked or fried donut, it's the nutmeg that makes it. And I think that's what the nutmeg for me does. Uh, in the recipe. This is, I should show you, I didn't measure it out of a container. This is um, a whole nutmeg and I find this is the best way to buy it because you don't have to pack it. I just leave it in a little dish with my other spices. You don't have to wrap it. It stays fresh forever and then you've got that freshly grated nutmeg that is just amazing. And if you are from Southeast Asia, you have probably seen this with the webbing attached to it. And it's called, the webbing is called mace. And it has another spice characteristic similar to nutmeg, but just a little bit different. Uh, I've got everything there. That's it for the dry ingredients. We'll give that a little sift. And the reason I'm sifting the flour separately, not right over the bowl, is I want to add some liquid to this recipe, but separately from, uh, in alternating from the flour. So I'm just clearing this from the edge. So I need a cup of liquid, 250 ml. And you'll notice in my social media post, I gave you options. The formal recipe calls for milk, and that could be um, semi-fat, like 2% milk, it could be whole milk. I'd steer clear of skim milk or fat-free milk just because you need that little bit of fat in there. But you've got versatility with this recipe. You could use buttermilk. You could use sour cream. You could use regular plain yogurt. You could use Greek yogurt. Or you could use kefir. And I get a lot of people asking for substitutions for buttermilk in baking. And buttermilk has an acidity to it. Um, contemporary buttermilk has a cultured element to it, where it used to be just what was left from the butter making process. Now it actually has a culture to it. And kefir is a liquid yogurt style drink. Kefir is the actual culture itself that is slightly different from um, traditional yogurt, but it still has that nice tang, but it's not overwhelming, which is why people use it in their smoothies and beverages. This is a brilliant substitution for buttermilk. Um, in Latin America, you might see it called as a Bulgarian milk drink, um, if that helps you find it. Because I also get asked a lot about what would make a good sour cream substitution. So this is why with this recipe, you've got the option. Milk, buttermilk, kefir, plain yogurt, Greek yogurt, have I covered them all? The sour cream, just my only rule is not non-fat because um, especially with the yogurts and the sour cream, they're often set with something other than the natural culture within it um, that can melt and become too liquid in baked goods. So that's why I steer clear of those. If you were not using a milk product at all, uh, a juice would work wonderfully or even like a very light tea but you just need that liquid in there. 
Now, I had a great question. Um, why do I alternate uh, my dry and wet when I'm making a cake? And I always start with the dry and finish with the dry. And the reason for that is for a smooth incorporation. If I were to add this cold kefir to my egg sugar mixture, I would definitely get some separation. So by insulating it with a little flour, in this case, just I can just do this in two additions, add half of the flour and I'll stir this until incorporated. And then this batter will accept the liquid that much easier. And you'll find with this particular muffin batter, um, as I mentioned earlier, unlike a cupcake or a cake batter, it's got a little more structure to it. And that is specific because I don't want you to add your fruit and have it all sink to the bottom. Sometimes some muffin recipes are too thin and if you all of a sudden add your fruit, you'll find that as it bakes, the fruit is heavier than the batter and it sinks to the bottom. So this batter is a little thicker than you might expect, but that holds the fruit in place. So I'm gonna add my kefir all at once. And I'll stir this in as well until combined, carefully, carefully. And then this is going to lead us into our whole conversation about the blueberries and the fruit, frozen versus fresh versus canned, because it really does depend where you live, what fruits you have available to you. But this is why this muffin base can take you through your entire fruit season. You can really change it up. Let's see if I can read questions and stir at the same time, because I like getting your questions. Ola is asking, yes, what if I add white vinegar to milk? Will it work? 100%. It is not specifically required for this recipe, Ola, for you to have the kefir or the buttermilk. It works with and without. Um, but yes, to recreate that acidity, you would add one tablespoon of white vinegar or um, lemon juice to one cup or 250 ml of milk. Essentially what you wanna do is pull that tablespoon out and replace it with the one tablespoon uh, and then you'll be good to go. I like to give it a stir, let it sit for a minute. Looks horrible, but it certainly works. So I've got a nice smooth batter here. This looks like a cake batter, but if I were to bake this muffin recipe right now, it would just bake flat and I would end up with one big mess of a glued muffin top to uh, the, at the top of my muffin tin. So I'm gonna add the rest of my flour. Give this a stir and take my time. Ah, Tanvi, I love your question. The difference between cupcakes and muffins. Frosting. That essentially is the key. Um, the minute you put uh, frosting on top of something, it becomes a cupcake. But a cupcake batter is designed to be like a cake, but self-contained. And the working going through making cupcakes, I find, is to develop the recipe so that when you peel away the paper, the paper comes away, but the cupcake stays in place. And quite often I find just a regular cake recipe, oh, you get that paper sticking to it. Where a muffin can be, there really are no big rules to what a muffin is. I mean, there's so many types out there. Um, but typically it's the intention. I think of a muffin as a snack or a breakfast treat or something to have with your coffee or tea, where a cupcake is definitely that after dinner or lunch treat or a birthday occasion. So if you're baking along with me, I hope you've reached this point so you can see how thick this batter is. When you think of, if you've ever made pound cake, pound cake has this density to it. But pound cake, um, of course, is, has a lot more butter and eggs to it. So this is just a little bit lighter, but it'll still bake up nice and fluffy. And now it's time for the fruit. You voted for blueberries. So I have two cups of fresh blueberries. Yes, fresh blueberries are easiest to work with because you just plop them right in the batter, give them a quick stir, and you're good to go. If you're baking with frozen blueberries, and 100% you can use frozen blueberries, I prefer to keep them frozen. Uh, take them right out of the freezer, and you'll want to add two tablespoons of flour to those frozen 
blueberries, toss them quickly, get them into your batter, stir them in quickly because the longer your blueberries have time to soften, you'll find you get these gray streaks of what used to be blue color woven throughout this beautiful batter and then it won't have quite the same look. Um, the bake time doesn't change, the volume doesn't change. Cherry, you were asking about um, using canned blueberries in syrup because you don't have fresh or frozen available. I would say yes, you can use it. You definitely want to drain them very, very well. And I would apply that same tip. Toss two tablespoons of flour into the tinned fruit just to absorb that excess moisture. I've learned this. I find with blueberries, it's easy. But if you wanted to say add cranberries to this recipe, cranberries um, in North America are big. They're about double the size, almost just smaller than a cherry. They're delicious in muffins, great punch of vitamin C and tart flavor, but a frozen cranberry um, lets off a lot of moisture when you bake it. So if you ever get those pockets of kind of squidgy batter inside your muffin, it's because of the moisture. So cranberries, I thaw halfway and let them drain a little bit. Um, so what, whatever fruit you're adding, make sure that the, there's no water coming off the fruit itself. Uh, raspberries are delicious too in this recipe. Pear cranberry. Um, let's think of tropical fruits. Mangoes would be delicious. I would love to put some diced pineapple in a muffin like this and I'd probably add some fresh coconut too. And I would use lime zest instead of lemon probably. What are some of your muffin ideas? What would you add? If you were going to add cherries, you would want to add tart cherries. You could also add dried fruits, but I find this style of muffin batter suits a fresh fruit or a frozen fruit as opposed to a raisin, um, dates, prunes, figs, which you can have an earthier batter for that style of recipe. Um, Sieda is asking a great question. What is the difference between uh, all-purpose, oh, Soggy wants cherries, the difference between all-purpose and cake flour is the protein content. So all-purpose flour for a muffin, like in this case, um, has a modest protein content and it can float. It can be used for breads, it can be used for pastry, but it sits in the middle. Where cake and pastry flour is made from a softer summer wheat, it's typically milled a little finer. Uh, you can buy it bleached and unbleached, depending on what you need but it's got a lower protein content. So it cannot hold the, the structure of, if you were to use it in this recipe, you would probably find that yes, your muffins would be tender, but they might be a little dense because they can't ha handle all that volume from the baking powder as it rises. But something like a chiffon cake or angel food cake, that is what uh, cake and pastry flour is made for. That's a good one. I'm gonna stir in my blueberries. If uh, you live anywhere in the same geography as I do, here in Southern Ontario in Canada, it's rhubarb season and it's strawberry season. So two cups of, insert fresh fruit here, is perfectly great. Oh, I love rhubarb muffins. And they have such a nice pink color. Strawberries on their own can be a little flat in a muffin. And another fruit I might steer clear of in a muffin would be any sort of melon, like a cantaloupe or honeydew. It's so sweet, it lacks that acidity that um, a, a fresh berry might have. Oh, but think about peaches, nectarines, plums, blackberries. There are just so many great fruit options. It may be tempting to put in more fruit. Um, if I'm making chocolate chip cookies, there's always room for more chocolate chips. But when it comes to a muffin, I don't want to overload it because you can end up with that juice of muffins at the bottom of your tin. And sometimes your muffins then will hold in that moisture. And it was, uh, Erica was asking about how does she avoid soggy muffins. Um, that is one tip, don't add too much fruit. But the other tip is then if you're finding them soggy, letting them cool in the tin too long, you can develop condensation, especially at the bottom half of the muffin, that can make it soggy. So if you pull them out to cool on a rack, uh, you might have better luck that way. So I hope that answers your question. So we've got the streusel done, the batter done, it's time to scoop. I like to use liners. These happen to be foil, but paper liners with muffins work just fine. And it's the reason I like them, outside of the fact they're aesthetically pleasing, is it just makes cleaning up a whole lot easier. So 
These make huge muffins. So you're gonna find that even using a large scoop, you're gonna get all your muffins filled and then you're still gonna have batter left. Keep filling it. This recipe makes 12 large muffins or if you've got those jumbo muffin li liners with the, the tulip style paper cup, you can fill them even more and you'll get eight. Um, the bake time, will it'll take an extra seven to 10 minutes for that style, the tulip style. And I'm just trying to keep an eye, make sure I get an even amount of blueberries in each muffin. No fights over who gets more blueberries in their muffin. Now, Stephen asked an interesting question. Could you take this recipe and spoon it into a waffle iron and make blueberry waffles? I'm gonna say that's not a recommendation. I think with the sugar content and the density of this batter that you would find the outside of the waffle would burn before the inside has a chance to cook through. But you will find uh, right here on Oh Yum, a fabulous buttermilk waffle recipe. And it's just a basic buttermilk waffle stir in your fresh blueberries into that and you'll be all set. That would work, I think, far better for you. There we go. So you can see I filled my muffin cups, but I have a whole lot of batter left. So if you want a more modest muffin that doesn't have that cap on top of it that bakes up, and it, it depends. If you like the, the crispy top to the muffin, especially the crunchy bit on the outside, you need to keep filling the muffin. If you don't want it to rise above your cupcake tin, then I would say you would get an extra four to six muffins out of this remaining batter. So I'll keep that in mind, but then you have two muffin tins to watch. Debates, debates. But what I'm gonna do, scraping my bowl, is scoop the rest of this batter. Try and divide it as evenly as I can. So just that last little capper. And I've preheated my oven. It's set at 375 Fahrenheit, that's 190. Uh, Celsius and you want to make sure it is fully preheated because what's key with a muffin is you want to get that sort of lift up over the muffin top a little bit so you get that crispy edge but then it will rise up in the center as it bakes. So I'm going to pop these in the oven. We'll take some time for some Q&A. So we may not get, these take 30 to 35 minutes to bake so we may not get to them being fully out of the oven. The, Magic of video here and planning ahead. I do have a batch ready so you can see what they look like. I just made that, pulled them out of the oven just over an hour ago. Um, but I'd like to show you what these muffins look like over the course of say the first 15 minutes so you can see how the batter changes um, as it bakes. Cause that's important is being confident when they're in the oven because at that point it's out of your control, isn't it? I think baking is a great skill to learn trust because you have to trust your tools you have to trust your technique you have to trust yourself when it comes to baking all right now for the streusel a generous sprinkle it will spill over onto the sides as you bake but that's where the crunchy bits develop so i try and put as much in the center and on top as i can it doesn't you don't need to pat it down or push it in but you can see with the structure of the batter that that streusel is not going to melt into the cupcake batter itself. If you want to add a streusel to a muffin recipe and it's a, a thinner batter, uh, a softer batter, what I would recommend is bake the muffins halfway so that way the top gets set and then sprinkle the streusel on top and then you, I think you'll find it stays in place. Gonna let a bit of this go to waste. I love picking at the toasty bits on the outside of the muffin tin. I wish there was a secret for cleaning a muffin tin better, but there's not. It is <laughs> using the paper liners is what's key. All right, these are ready for the oven. And as I said, they take 30 to 35 minutes, but I'll set the timer for 10 so we can take a peek at what they look like at the 10 minute mark. Okay, 
So before I show you the ones I've already baked, let's take a, a few more questions and I'm gonna review the ones uh, that were sent in earlier. So just to let you know, TJ, the fantastic channel manager, um, a lot of you already have good dialogue and conversations with him. He collects the questions um, and I look at the ones on my social media. So we have sort of good questions going in, plus the ones you sent uh, along the way. Like, oh, Costell is asking, would adding fat oil increase the tenderness? Uh, Costell works for the elderly and things. Yes, sometimes you need softer foods. Um, I would say yes, but you would want to reduce the, the butter called for in the recipe is 115 grams or half a cup. I would reduce the oil to 100 mils or 100 grams just to counter the fact that butter is 80% um, butter fat and some water so that you don't end up with a greasy or too heavy muffin and that could make it softer. Um, the other trick would be, I've been talking about getting that crispy top with the streusel topping, is um, cool the muffins and actually put them in an airtight container, even if they're just a little bit warm, and that will actually soften up the top of the muffin. Um, so they won't be so crunchy and probably easier to bite through. And I think the paper liners help. Um, another tip might be to use a silicone baking pan, because when you're using silicone, the, the, when you use a metal tin, the metal conducts heat to the outside of the batter, and that's why things brown and they turn crispy. If you were to use silicone, it's essentially kind of steaming uh, the muffin, and you would find you get that softer outside. So that might be a good, that was a, an interesting question to ask. Uh, Fatima is asking about the whole wheat flour substitution. Yes, up to 50% in this recipe. So the recipe calls for 375 grams. For this specific recipe, you only want to replace whole wheat flour up to 50% or you end up compromising the end result. But I develop lots of healthy, uh, healthier options using 100% whole grains. I've got a great little mini bran muffin recipe. Uh, yes, it's a bran muffin recipe uh, right here on Oh Yum if you want that healthier whole grain option. So that's a very good question. Victor, you're asking about baking at high altitude. Um, great question, because a lot of people in, uh, depending where you live, if you are more than 10,000 feet above sea level, you are going to find um, even 5,000 feet a, a difference in your baking. And that is due to resist, uh, lower resistance because of lower air pressure. So typically you want to lower your oven temperature by about 25 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. You want to add a little more liquid, I would say 15 to 20% more liquid in your recipe and reduce your baking powder, baking soda by about 20% uh, to 25%. So if the recipe calls for a teaspoon, use three quarters a, a teaspoon. All those factors together balance out how your ingredients rise and lift together uh, against the lower air pressure at high altitude. So I hope that helps. The bake time, you just have to get to know your oven. And I, I can't tell you specifically if the bake time would change, but that is a very good question. Uh, Justin asks a good question. Would any cake batter be converted into a cupcake? I have tried um, just for the sake of simplicity to do that quite a few times. And I find it sometimes works, but quite often doesn't. And because a cake batter needs to be, a, a cake to be sliced cleanly and evenly and have a nice texture when you eat it, um, it's, it's just a different makeup. And so that batter can be a little more fluid and wet. And if you bake that in a cupcake form in the oven, that you'll find you get a cupcake with a flat top, uh, not a nice peak to it, and the cake itself will stick to your paper. So that's a very good question too. Just as a reminder to everyone that um, this entire episode will be posted right here on the Oh Yum uh, channel so you can watch it and review later and pick up these great tips. Uh, the recipe link will be included and also don't forget we've got new recipes that come out Tuesdays and Fridays every week and our national holiday Canada Day is next Wednesday so Tuesday is going to have a little Canadian angle to it so keep on eye you want to subscribe so you get the alert when that recipe pops up. Uh, oh, good questions. Oh, wow. 
Sagi is asking about freezing these muffins. Yes, they freeze amazingly well. A nice light, light yet a dense is not the word I want to use to describe this batter, but this texture of muffin uh, really does freeze very well. And also that reminds me, Natalia was asking, can you make this batter ahead and bake them later? 100%. That's what, uh, when uh, I was in the bakery business, we would do, make big batches of batter, chill the batter, and then we would scoop and bake throughout the whole day so that fresh muffins would always be coming out of the oven. So a batter like this stores very well in the fridge. Fantastic question. Now, if you have a day old muffin, and it's a little bit stale, a great trick to refresh a slightly stale muffin is to brush about a tablespoon of milk on top of it and then pop it in the oven or if you have a microwave for just about 30 seconds, microwave more like 10 seconds, oven 30 seconds to a minute, that milk will warm up, absorb into the muffin, kind of produce a little bit of steam and bring that muffin back to just like it was freshly baked. So I think now's a good time. I can bring over the muffins I baked just a little while ago. So now you can see what I mean about a batter that bakes up, but then spreads to kind of give you that nice little cap on the outside of the muffin. And it depends on who you are, if you prefer the top or the bottom of a muffin. So my sweetie, early on in our relationship, we learned that he prefers the muffin top, I prefer the muffin bottom. So we just decided we were a good match. I can arrange these. But you can see how that streusel, it doesn't completely cover the muffin, but you don't want to hide the blueberries in there. The juices will naturally come out. That's just the nature of what they do. But think if you had raspberries in there, you can, oh, I can actually smell the blueberry. And I get the hint of cinnamon, but it's not too much. There we go, and let's open one up to see. So this is what I'm after with a muffin. I don't have muffin left on the paper so that you have to scrape the paper off with your teeth. You want it to come away easily. And another reason why you don't want to put in too much fruit because you'd end up with a fruit dessert at the bottom of your muffin tin. And then when you tear it open, well, that is pretty packed with blueberries. So I think we're doing quite well there. Mm, it smells so good. I'm going to take a bite in a second. I want to take a few more minutes to answer your questions and then we'll take a peek at the um, muffins that are in the oven just so you can see how they're coming along. Oh, Keto Goody said, I think I tried this recipe 20 times. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> but you know, once you find a good recipe, it becomes a staple. And so with a fundamental recipe like this, I've given you so many options for the different dairy to add, uh, different sugars, flours, and of course the flavoring and fruits. If you want to put nuts in here, you go for it. But this is that nice, basic, fundamental batter that will get you through it. Uh, oh, a question. In the key lime pie recipe, what other citruses could you use? That key lime pie recipe is quite its own thing. Like I've never seen, um, you know, just like lemon meringue pie is its own thing, key lime is its own thing, but I could say you could use lemon in its place, but any other citrus, grapefruit might be too bitter, orange would be too sweet and soft, um, so lime or lemon would be your choices in between. Or if you're from the Philippines and you have calamansi limes, oh, now those could be used. So you'd have calamansi limes, for those um, who don't know, oh my gosh, they're delicious. They're the size of a key lime, they're tiny, and when you cut into them, they're orange, and they taste like a lime like we know of in North America, but they've got this fruity character and tartness that is just so robust, delicious in dessert. So I would say if you can get your hands on calamansi lime, I'm glad we talked this through, that that would make a delicious um, variation. Oh, Nika agrees. Yes to the calamansi. Oh, and hello to Argentina. Um, I know you're heading into your fall and winter season. So if you have things like squash or pumpkin, um, apples, I've tried the apples in Argentina are delicious. You could either coarsely grate an apple into the batter or dice it. Um, and then that maybe with a little bit of raisin would be good in that recipe. Um, oh, Trina, you're asking an ex excellent question. 
Uh, can we double this recipe without compromising the quality? 100%. Um, definitely, I would recommend to any baker who wants to batch up it, recipes like this, follow the weights as opposed to the volumes because the weights are more precise and you'll get a more consistent result, especially as you batch up. Um, so that is a fantastic question. Oh, hello. Hola from Spain. Um, or Buena Sera, I guess I should say. It's evening. Um, okay, we've got, oh, yeah. Calamansi, everyone's on board with the calamansi. And someone was asking, could I use the streusel in the batter as opposed to adding fruit? Yes, 100%. If you want more of that coffee cake uh, crumble kind of muffin, I would double up on your streusel and then you could fill the muffin cup halfway, sprinkle the streusel, fill it with the remaining batter and then put the remaining streusel on top and then that would be delicious too. Um, you'd find though without the two cups of fruit you'll get fewer muffins so probably 12 muffins that aren't quite as high. Now I promised I'd, we'd take a peek. I'll bring the, the um, muffins out to you Michael but see how I don't want to leave them out of the heat too long because it's early on but you can see how they're starting to just spill over the sides but when you compare to the baked muffins, see how you get that peak in the center? So add the, as these continue to bake, this is where I don't want you to worry that it's going to keep spreading, 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 because this batter now is going to start lifting up in the center. I mean, those berries have barely started cooking yet. We're only 20 minutes into the cooking process. All right, these are fantastic questions. I love how sometimes the simplest things we bake together end up yielding the most interesting questions and we really get into the topic. But as I said before, my goal has always been to instill confidence in you that you can make these. You've got the power to control what's happening throughout the process and to customize what you make to share with family and friends. So. It's, uh, we're an exciting time when it comes to baking because everybody's got this new interest. Um, oh, Martina, why does my cake always shrink back down when I take it out of the oven? It could be uh, a couple of things. We're not going to blame it on you. We're going to say it's your oven. Um, quite often, because you set your oven to a specified temperature doesn't mean it is that temperature. And so a great tip for you would be to make sure you have an oven thermometer in your oven and watch it and watch how your oven works. Because ovens, they when they hit their temperature, they'll shut down, turn off, shut down. And that level of variation could be extreme or very small. Um, or your oven may not be hitting the temperature you think. So quite often it's a sign that it's not fully baked. So that as soon as your cake hits the cool air of your kitchen, it just contracts a little bit. So um, giving it that extra five minutes is the easiest fix. Um, and then try and get that oven thermometer in there. That's a great question. Uh, Shirley's asking, can I reduce the sugar and by how much? Um, yes, I would say you can. It is part of what lends the balance of taste and texture to this recipe. Um, but if you're looking to reduce the sugar a bit, I would say no more than a third or 30%. The recipe calls for one cup. So two thirds of a cup, uh, which is just 160 grams um, is how much you want to, no, just under that, um, is how much you want to uh, reduce the sugar without really compromising the end result. I would recommend adding a little extra of the milk or yogurt or whatever the dairy liquid you're adding to because sugar does more in baking than just add sweetness. It also lends structure and moisture and so you don't want to end up with a dry, a doughy kind of muffin. Um, so add an extra quarter cup. So reduce the sugar by a third, but add an extra quarter cup of liquid. That was a great question. Uh, and a good question. Anya says, what do we do if we do not have an oven thermometer? Um, it is, it, to me, it's a valuable tool as much as my mixer or my spatula is. But if you don't have one, you, you, the more you bake, the more you get to know your oven. So if you find, try different recipes. You try a cookie that takes, the recipe calls for 10 minutes, you're finding it takes 12 or maybe it takes eight. Then you try a muffin recipe. 
The recipe says it takes 30 minutes, but maybe you're finding it takes 35 minutes. Then you start to develop a pattern with, depending on what the recipe is and it's bake time, that it's always about 10% longer in your oven. You get to know your oven. I mean, we do, we have to be friends. Like I said before, uh, baking is about trust and, and that point where you relinquish all that work you put into making your muffin batter and it's out of your hands when the oven. Um, so getting to know it, to know if you need to rotate your pans or do other things is really handy. I'm gonna take one more question, but I will remind you this full recipe will be posted uh, right here on Oh Yum. You've got new recipes to look forward to, and I am going to mention that next week will be my uh, end of season one of Oh Yum 101 Live because I have to hit pause to go work on some more recipes so I can bring them right to you right here on the channel. Uh, so to do that, I have to step away from the Thursday noon Eastern time slot, but both TJ and I talks and Michael being so supportive here have all agreed that this has been such a fabulous thing that we're not just going to stop doing Oh Yum 101 live, but I will make sure I announce when a live session is coming up and you can count on other fun things like behind the scenes shots and we're getting really creative with what we can do. So I do want you to keep coming back to this channel. Um, so next week's, next Thursday's is going to be a really special one um, and I have an idea of what it's going to be at, about. We're going to think outside the box a little bit. So, um, but it will, of course, always involve informative tips and sharing and techniques and to get you through. So if I have to step aside from this live session, I know you're going to be in great hands, empowered to bake and share. So I hope, you, I said I was going to take one last question, didn't I? So I better just do that. <laughs> um, oh, well, that's not a question, but a request. A kitchen tour? I think we can arrange a kitchen tour. I think uh, that can definitely be arranged. Oh, you're writing such great notes. Um, oh, okay, here, let's go with this question. A dulce de leche sent Carol Wilton, I love that question, to this cupcake. Um, I would give it a try because with the density, you saw how um, dense this batter was when I mixed it raw, anything more wet, and I think the dulce de leche would sink in the center. I would definitely make sh refrigerate your dulce de leche so it starts cold, so it stays in place as the rest of the muffin is setting around it, but wouldn't that be decadent? That's, oh, that's quite a surprise. Ooh, with some apple in there too. Great idea. See, you're already off to the races. You don't need me. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> so come back, join me next week. And, oh, we want to check on the muffins? Okay. We're going to do one last check on the muffins. I know they're not done yet. Oh, but they are changing. They are changing. Oh, and I saw that one last great question. Linda was asking, how come I always use tea towels in and out of the oven? Um, and that's just a, a baker's habit because when you work in a restaurant or in a bakery, um, you keep tea towels by the oven because everybody's in and out of the oven all day long. And those oven mitts can take too long to, to put on and pull off your hands. So that's why it's just habit, nothing else than that. See how they're starting to dome up a little bit? So they've stopped creeping over the side and then you end up with this fantastic end result. So these are gonna go back in the oven. Bonnie's gonna get her text in a little while and I'll walk down and deliver some. As is the routine. You've got to know the people in my neighborhood. <laughs> so I will thank you again for joining me for another great OEM 101 session. Stay safe, stay well. And if you're like me, you're really excited about getting a haircut. So that's next on my to-do list. Have a great week, everyone.